Today is a great day, guys. It's been a long time coming, but we've got some really exciting news, so I hope you stick around. This has been a long time coming, and I really, really appreciate the work that Mr. Grinch has put into this. Um, we've been working together for the last few months, going back and forth. Uh, basically, he dove into this, ripped it apart, and rebuilt it from the ground up to uh, better specifications that I helped lay out as, a, as an author. Uh, he listened to authors. He listened to uh, what the issues were and really dove in, and I can't thank him enough for putting in that time and effort to fix this. So what is Altsound 2.0? Well, it's a number of things. Let's talk about what has changed. First of all, bug fixes. Altsound 2.0 fixes the bugs that were contained in the original Altsound. Low levels, uh, sounds not triggering, improper ducking uh, of audio files. That's all fixed in Altsound 2.0. It offers a new G sound format. Uh, pin sound, alt sound, now G sound, which adds a non ton of new flexibility for authors. There's a new INI settings config file contained where you set all of your settings in the folder for your alt sound. It's fully backwards compatible. All pre-existing alt sounds will still work and you have to do nothing to make that happen. And some new debug tools, which we'll cover in future videos, specifically for authors, uh, but just add a ton of value uh, for uh, debugging, fixing, working, creating on alt sounds. So what is G sound? Well, G sound is a new alt sound format. Pin sounds a format. The original alt sound. G sound is the newest format of alt sound. Now, what does that mean? Well, it changes the way that alt sounds operate in that it's sound type based you can assign behaviors to those types. And it adds group volume adjustments to quickly and easily adjust volumes by type rather than having to individually set each volume in the CSV. So let's take a look at a G sound and see what it's made up of. So we're in our alt sound folder. In our alt sound folder, just like normal, we have our folder names that match the ROM name for our alt sound. Now, inside the alt sound folder, you'll see two files, an alt sound.ini and a gsound.csv. Normally, you'll used to see the alt sound.csv. This is the same thing except for gsound. Everything else in this folder is just an audio file. Okay, so not much has changed there. The alt sound.ini file will be created automatically the first time that you open the table that correlates to this alt sound folder. Okay, so let's take a look at the alt sound.ini that's automatically created and our gsound.csv. This will be included by the author. So there's nothing you really need to do with this as an end user unless you want to make adjustments. We're going to skip these features for now. We'll come back to that. We're going to start right here. So the new alt sound 2.0 supports all previous formats of alt sound and adds a new format called G sound. You can see here, I've set the format to G sound. Okay. Logging. One of the nice features on the new alt sound is that you can create an alt sound.log file and that file will be contained in your tables folder. Now you can set the level of logging here. Moving on here. Now, this part and below only applies to G sound. This down to logging and above, this is for all alt sound. Does that make sense? This is where we get into assigning uh, uh, and all the new features that have been added through the G sound format. So if you take a look at the gsound.csv, you'll see it looks very similar to the altsound.csv that you're used to, but slightly trimmed down, okay? So one of the nice things is we simplified 
a few of the uh, settings and we removed some that weren't necessary with the new format. So the ID is the same. Then you'll see here, this used to be where you assigned a channel, zero or one. Now this is a type based system. Now this is a type based system and we'll explain what that means. Then next to that you have gain, which is simply volume per file. This next column here refers to ducking profile, which we'll explain. And then the file name, that's it. A much trimmed down CSV, which will make things much simpler. So let's talk about types for a second. That will get us back into the INI. You can see here that we assign each audio file a type. Now, these types determine how the audio file will behave. And all of that is set in the INI. So now that we've looked at the CSV and we see that we set types here, we can simply go over here and now break it down. G sound format supports the following types. Music, we all know what music is, the background music. Only one of those can play at a time. Next, we have callouts, which are voice interludes or callouts. Only one can play at a time. Sound effects, short sounds to supplement table sounds. Multiple can play at a time. Then solo, so, uh, sound played at the end of a ball or game or tilt, and only one can play at a time. Finally, we have overlay, which are sounds played over the music and sound effects, and only one can play at a time. So those are our types, okay? And every single sound audio file can be broken down into one of those five types. G sound sample types have built-in behaviors, okay? Some can be modified. That's the flexibility of G sound. Ducks, we specify which sample types are ducked. So when one sound plays, if there's other sounds playing, we might want to duck those sounds so that the new sound being triggered can be heard more easily. Pauses would pause the audio file. Stops would stop the audio file. New feature that I love here called group volume. This is very simple in that instead of changing the individual volumes for each audio file, we can set the overall volume for that type. So anything assigned to music, music group volume would be set here. If I were to change that to say 80, that would lower all of the files assigned to the music type by 20%. And that is per type. So you can see here we have all of the types broken into sections, music, call out, sound effects, solo, and overlay, all represented here, the five types. This is where we assign the behaviors on how we want those types to behave. We'll get into this in a second. So that's group volume and then ducking profiles, relative ducking volumes for specified sample types. And you can see we'll set those down here as well. And then those are determined in this row on the G sound and that's per type. Okay. So Ducking profile one for overlay is not the same as ducking profile one for solo. They each have their own types and we'll see that right here. Also authors, make sure that you go through these notes just to clarify on how and what's allowed when you're setting the behaviors. Each sample type is gonna have their group volume. Okay. And that's super convenient as we talked about. Okay, so setting behaviors for type, here's our callout type. We want callouts to duck the sound effects, music, and any overlays that happen. No pauses for callouts, no stops for callouts, and the group volume set to 100. So right now, anytime a callout triggers, it's going to duck the sound effects, the music, and any overlays that happen to be playing when that callout is triggered. Well, how much do we want it to duck? Well, that's where ducking profiles come in. Okay, so zero is always reserved. You don't have to worry about that. That's just letting you know that we're gonna start on one. So all profiles, ducking profiles will start on one. I can have multiple ducking profiles. 
which we'll talk about when we get down here. So all we're saying is we're setting the parameters for what we've told it to do, right? So we want it to duck sound effects, music, and overlay. Here we're saying we want the sound effects to duck to 80%. We want the music to duck to 65%. And we want the overlay to duck to 50%. Anytime this audio file is triggered, it ducks profile one, which is set right here to this to these amounts. Make sense? Okay. Sound effects. Simple. We want the sound effects to duck the music. So this is already a great feature for, for G sound where we're customizing it because in the original alt sound sound effects, although it said that they had ducking values, it didn't actually duck the music. So here we're already getting more functionality. So I've set the sound effects to duck the music. I have the sound effects group volume set to 80%. And then we set our ducking profile that we told it we wanted to duck music how much ducking profile one we want the music to duck to 85 sound effects anything over here with type sound effects ducking profile one is going to anytime this audio file triggers it's going to duck the music to 85 and that just pertains over it for each type okay so solo stops so here we're not ducking, we're stopping, right? When a solo is triggered, here you can see, for example, what do we have assigned to solo? We have the tilt assigned to solo, right? So here's tilt sounds assigned to a solo type. Why would we want to do that? Well, when a tilt happens, everything stops, correct? And we just hear the tilt sound. So that's what we're telling it to do. When a solo type is triggered, stop the music, stop any overlays, stop any callouts that happen. Last, overlays. What do we want to happen? We want it to duck music and sound effects when an overlay happens. How much do we want it to duck the music and sound effects? Well, sometimes you may want multiple ducking profiles per type, and this allows you to do that. So. You can see I have ducking profile one set to the, the sound effects to go to 90 and the music to duck to 70 when any overlay triggers that's set to profile one. Now I have a second ducking profile set where we still have the little carve out in the sound effects, but I want the music to get completely out of the way and go all the way down to 10% here. And you can see on that overlay, I have it set right here, ducking profile two. So when this specific sound, which is a start mission sound, which is why I want the music to get out of the way and Slash plays this guitar here, and I wanna just hear that guitar without clashing with the music. So I've set up, but I want it to perform like an overlay, right? So I've set the overlay, but I've made its own ducking profile separate from the first ducking profile, which has different characteristics. Awesome flexibility. Now, I hope that's not too complicated, but this wanted to show you some of the amazing new features and flexibility that's available through the G sound format of alt sound. I wanna make sure we go over one setting that's very important here. Uh, this will be set typically by the author, so you won't have to do it, but I wanted to talk about the ROM volume control. Now the ROM volume control, let's read what it says here. The alt sound processor attempts to recreate original playback behavior using commands sent from the ROM. This does not work in all cases, resulting in undesirable muting of the playback volume. Setting this variable to zero turns this feature off. This option works for all alt sound formats. So, the reason this was included is to make sure that uh, the original alt sound uh, functionality is maintained. And for the original alt sound functionality to be maintained, this would be set to one. Now what I found is I do not want the original alt sound integrity to be maintained because it doesn't work correctly. So for me, I'm setting this to zero. Uh, what I found by setting this to zero is overall volumes are louder. It just works better. So my recommendation 
is to have ROM volume control set to zero. And that takes, uh, I feel, it takes more advantage of the fixes in the newer version of Alt Sound 2.0. So I'll be making some other videos going into more details about specifics. I think, let me know in the comments what you guys, what questions you'd like answered, what you'd like to see covered that's not covered in this video, and I'll do my best to uh, make more content for you guys. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.